All right, guys, 7950X, 5950X. Is the upgrade worth it? Hey guys, Kane's Observations, Mike here. So today, the big dilemma, do I upgrade from the 5950X to the 7950X? I think, you know, whether or not you should upgrade your CPU, or let's talk about general hardware. Like, okay, so every year a new iPhone comes out, you know, um, it's got a better processor, more cores, more RAM, but do you really, really need that upgrade? Well, apparently a lot of people still run in the store and Apple's still making trillions of dollars, but for the most part, the average person's probably not even utilizing 30 or 40% of what their previous iPhone can do. So, but what does everybody want? The latest and the greatest. Um, I'm guilty of that myself. So, um, things I really like about um, Ryzen 7000 series is, you know, obviously it's they're in the five nanometers now instead of seven. The boost clocks are, are insane. I think the boost clocks on the 7950, um, they're up to 5.7 gigahertz and the base clock is 4.5. The TDP is a little higher at 120 watts compared to the 5950X, which the, TD, the TDP came in at 105 watts. Um, I love higher single core boost clocks. Um, most software that we run, um, that higher boost clock really, really matters. Now, I wish that everything was multi-threaded and everything used to full 16 cores and then the other 16 threads, so you have 32 threads just going ham at, at 4.9 um, gigahertz. That's what the 5950X boost clock is. Now, when I bought the 5950X, I think it came out priced at $999. The 7950X is right now priced at Amazon at $699, and guess what? It's actually available. There's not a fight for it. Hopefully, I didn't jinx that. I remember trying to get my hands on the 5950X, and that was like pulling teeth or, you know, trying to have a, you know, schedule a dinner date with the president. That's how, that's how difficult it was. So, but I really... There's a lot of performance gains um, by jumping into the 7950X, but there's so many variables to talk about. You know, um, what resolution do you game at? You know, some games we're seeing anywhere from a 20 to 30, 33% increase, and some of them you're only seeing 9 to 10 FPS by upgrading the CPU. Um, I feel like there's a huge generational difference between GPUs and CPUs. I feel like you could probably skip two or three generations of CPUs, and still be perfectly fine gaming and running your everyday applications that you know um, us everyday users um, run. Now GPUs, that's a whole other ball game. Maybe you can skip one or two generations, but once in a while, you, once in a while, you'll get like a huge generational leap where it's the performance gains are so incredible that you just have to get your hands on it. Um, I'm not seeing. Um, massive improvements with NVIDIA's next generation GPUs along with AMDs. Um, so is it worth spending another thousand dollars on um, AMD's new generation GPUs just to replace the 6800 XT? Probably not. Um, goes back to the saying, can you never ha you can never have enough power. Um, so it, it really it really all depends. For me, for personally for me, it's not going to give me um, cost price poor excuse me price per performance it, it's not going to really be worth it to me now i'm not going to lie the 7950x coming in at 699 is super duper enticing to buy um because i could probably get rid of my 5950x for you know two or three hundred dollars but again should you upgrade it's such a hard thing. I've watched a lot of videos of people talking about, you know, should you upgrade this and that? And like I said, there's just too many variables um, to each individual. It's, you know, there's a lot of different, everybody's different. Excuse me what I'm trying to say when you're, when you're talking about trying to upgrade. So I really do like the boost clocks though um, at 5.7 gigahertz. I really do like that, um, you know, and it's got a lot more cache. It's got you know, 80, 85 megs of L3 cache compared to 64. Um, it's just a really great CPU and being on a, a five nanometer die is, is really, really nice. But um, I think for now, for me, I'm gonna stick with the 5950X. Um, 
it's just so much power that I, I don't even utilize. I wish there was more um, of the software that I use. I wish more of it was multi-threaded and would be able to, you know, maximize all, all 16 cores. Um, you know, somewhere down the line, if software is more integrated into, you know, multi-threaded using, you know, 64 threads, 128 threads, then, you know, we could bring down the core clocks and go for more cores. But, you know, um, as of right now, and a lot of software, like I said, in applications, they're, they're single threaded. So, you know, having that, you know, that higher clock speed is, is really, really important. And it does make a significant difference in, uh, in gaming, um, especially. If we can get a, a single core up to like 6.5 gigahertz that doesn't have to be um, on liquid nitrogen, that would be absolutely fantastic. But um, a big shout out to AMD. Even from the beginning when Ryzen first came out, they have really kind of changed the game. They have really pushed Intel into actually doing something when Intel was just stagnant for so many years, all the way back to the 3700K and moving on. They just didn't have any competition. And when you don't have any competition, it doesn't really motivate you to have to do anything else or really release any anything else. Um, Intel was probably sitting on um, CPUs forever and just not releasing them because there really wasn't a point to doing so so you know i applaud amd for kind of you know pushing the amd pushing intel um to have to do better things i think it's a it's a good healthy competition them going back and forth um i really love where amd is now with their ryzen lineups being all the way down to five nanometer chips and the boost clocks are increasing um their gpus can even stand the test of time they were really behind nvidia for a long long time um in the gpu segment so that gap has has greatly closed um nvidia is just a powerhouse when it comes to GPUs. So again, grats to AMD for, for closing that gap. And uh, and who knows, you know, in the future, a lot of times they go head to head, you know, AMDs win certain games, Nvidia wins in certain games. Um, but who knows, maybe in the future, um, AMD will become the top dog and take that crown from, uh, from, AM, from Nvidia, excuse me. So but a lot of great products out there, guys, if you're in the market for, you know, a new CPU, I would, I would take a look at the 7950X, um, the availability, um, it's priced well. If you do a lot of video editing, if you use a lot of software that uses multi-cores, that's definitely something to look at. But the whole um, Series 7000 lineup is fantastic. And in my honest opinion, you really can't go wrong with either one. And probably for the most part, most people <laughs> aren't even going to utilize using a 7950X. You know, sometimes it's just nice to be able to say when they're like, hey, what are you running? Be like, a 7950X, you know, so. But I also want to let you guys know, if you guys haven't watched my video on the Corsair K100, I'm going to have it post up and post a link down in the description below. Check it out. I do have kind of a big surprise coming um, regarding that keyboard. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that and check it out. But as always, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. Um, feel free to share. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.